Um, there used to be a lot, lots of troops out marching on the on John Street, you know, a lot of traffic there. They were they used to march out to the um, um, government grounds every day for their target practice and all that. And they used to march out there every day, every morning, and come back in the evenings. But there was always lots of traffic and lots of troops going back and forth on John Street at all hours of the day and night. And uh, this this one evening, my mother and sister and I were. We're taking a walk up John Street between our house and the corner, and there was a lot of long grass there. And uh, as we walked along, we saw we saw a whole bunch of soldiers in uniform lying in the grass, and they looked as if they might be dead. They were all lying in a row in in the long grass in the early evening. Well, we thought this was very strange. We couldn't figure this out at all. So we thought we'd better call the camp uh, officials and get some of the officers over to see what this was all about. And uh, they heard us talking about this. Uh, we, we realized later that what we were going to do. So we had barely summoned the officers till the dead men all rose up in a body and ran up John Street as hard as they could go. They all rose up, to, hiding from some, I guess they were hiding behind their officers and trying to maybe get for a night out of the town or something, but um, they heard us, they must have heard us coming along or, or whatever, but anyhow, by the time we saw them, they were, we could just see them hiding in this grass, and it seemed so strange, they were all laid out in rows, they looked as if they were dead. <laughs> And then, of course, in the winter time, the the Royal Canadian Rifles and the Royal Canadian Dragoons were always billeted in Stanley Barracks in Toronto, and they were they were here even in non-war years. There were the summer camps here; they were always the summer camp. And so those men would go back and forth between here and Toronto. So we we had a close relationship with the people from Toronto too. In the evenings, they used to have their their tattoo ceremonies. In the evenings, they going down in the sun. And we used to go over when they um, they played the um, uh, the bugles. Oh, we were right across, and there was a there was a long building over there, which is no longer there, right opposite our house on John Street, and as well as the supply depot, and that's where all the bulk food was brought in and stored. So every, and my sister was reminding me the other day on the phone. Remember, she said all activities were punctuated by um, blasts on the bugle throughout the day to tell what was supposed to happen, who was supposed to do what. But first thing in the morning, the trucks would come to collect the, uh, the bulk food to take to the kitchen for the different regiments. And of course, in the first war, it was wagons driven by horses. We knew all, all the, the nice men who came with their, with their beautiful horses and wagons, and we thought it was so exciting. And they would come every morning, quite early, and pick up all their food supplies for the day. And they were taken back to the kitchens and prepared. So they, they did that on a daily basis. And uh, they had a, a very nice custom on Sunday mornings. I can't remember if it was every Sunday or not, but it was certainly two or three times a month. All the regiments that were in camp would have church parade and they'd march through the town and it was wonderful when the Highland regiments were in and the 48th and the Toronto Scottish were here. It was marvelous to see them and to hear the bagpipes and they'd all, they'd all go marching down King Street and everybody, the townspeople would always stand along the way to watch them pass by and the townspeople always stood, stood by to watch them load onto the train cars to go overseas too. That was, that was sad.